In this lesson, we'll be using turning profile on internal geometry. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create an internal turning profile toolpath, identify toolpath warning, and modify tool orientation in the toolpath. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, and let's talk about using our profile toolpath on internal geometry. To get started, we can either copy our profile toolpath and modify its parameters, or we can go into turning and create a new turning profile. The first thing that I'm going to do before selecting a tool is actually change the mode to be inside profiling. From here, we're going to then select a tool. I'm going to use my samples vendor library again, and then we also want to take a look at filtering our tools. We're going to be using a boring bar. This is going to be used to cut internal geometry. And notice that my vendors don't contain any tools that match this description. My samples library does contain one boring bar. So we're going to select this as our option and say OK. You'll notice that the geometry of this boring bar is actually too large to get into this part. This means that we would need a much smaller tool in order to get in here and cut that geometry. We can create a custom boring bar or we could actually use an end mill that has center cutting abilities to create this geometry. But let's continue to explore this toolpath and make changes to the tool later. So we have the turning mode set to inside profile, cutting front to back, and we're going to use the allow radial and axial grooving even though we don't have any internal grooves. The reason I like to leave this on is just in case the geometry happens to change, I like to make sure that I have this option on because it doesn't affect the geometry as it is now. We also have the ability to change the tool direction and orientation. For example, right now it's set to zero degrees. If I change this to 10 degrees, it's going to rotate the tool in one direction. If I change it to minus 10, it'll rotate in the other direction. You'll notice at some point the tool turns red. This is because there are limits set for specific tools. If we set this to minus five degrees, you'll notice that it is able to create that geometry and the tool is no longer red. We're going to set this back to zero for now, and we're going to move on to some of our other options. For our geometry, right now it's set to look at the entire part, and that's okay, but I am going to turn on rest machining from previous operations. I wanted to know that the face has already been taken care of, and we're only focusing inside of this area. For the radii, you'll notice that it's going from the stock ID, but there's an offset that's been applied. I'm going to leave this as is for now, but just note that this offset value would likely create a partial issue for us, so we might have to come back and address it. In the passes section, you'll notice that we have several of the same options that we did when we were using this for outside profiling. We have roughing, we have finishing options, number of stepovers, and we're going to leave all these as default for right now. And then under linking parameters, again, we have all the same options. So we're going to say OK and allow it to create this toolpath. You'll notice with the preview on the screen that it creates a toolpath just fine, even though we know this tool cannot fit into that geometry. If we take a look at our browser, you'll notice that there's a warning. It tells us that the toolpath crosses the rotary axis, which means that as the toolpath is cutting, it moves across the center of rotation. Why is this a problem? Well, when you're cutting geometry, you want to have the material engaging the top of the insert. That way it's pushing all the force down on the holder. If you happen to lift up on the insert, which is sometimes called dragging, if you happen to lift up on the insert, you could get into a situation where one is just rubbing on the material, it's not actually cutting, or you could also cause an issue where the part and the tool gouge each other, you could potentially dislodge it from the chuck. There are many issues and many things that you want to avoid. In some cases, this is going to be okay, but it is a warning that is applied and it's not stopping us from creating this toolpath. I'm going to simulate this to take a quick look and we can play through this or we can manually move the cursor. So you'll notice that as the tool goes in, not only is it cutting the geometry, but it is also engaging the stock and removing all this material that we don't want. So the toolpath works fine, but in this case, the geometry of the tool is not applicable because it's just too big to fit inside of this. 
We can make some adjustments. We can modify the tool itself. We can also modify the operation. For example, we can set this instead of front to back, we can go both directions. So that way the tool isn't going in and out a bunch of different times. We can also turn off some of our options like roughing. If we don't want to rough the tool path and we want to pre-drill it, then we can just do finishing tool paths to limit the amount that the tool actually needs to move around inside of this area. And there again are many other options that we could explore based on the specific geometry. For this part, it really makes more sense for us to drill, then come back in with a custom tool to finish the geometry. But I do think it's important that we explore these options and we're able to identify when we do have problems, such as this case where the tool is just too large to fit inside of our part. For right now, I'm going to navigate back to a home view, and I'm actually going to rotate this part around. I'm going to go to the front corner that's between right and back. I'm going to use this drop down, and I'm going to reset my home position as my current position. So what this will allow me to do is anytime I move my part around and I hit home, it's going to go back to this orientation. This helps especially when parts are drawn relative to the coordinate system that we're going to be machining them in. They often will point out and away from how our normal home view is. From here, let's go ahead and make sure that we save our file. Then I want to come back in and I'm going to delete profile two by right clicking and deleting. Then I'm going to save it again. This allows me to have a version that I can always go back to if I want to recreate that. But in this case, we don't need it because we need to pre-drill first before we create that geometry. Drilling is something we'll get to a little bit later. So for right now, just make sure that your file is saved before moving on to the next step. 